a beacon of hope fighting for peace, democracy and decency. That's how the readers of Politico Media described Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky, who has topped the Politico online poll as the most powerful person in Europe. According to the audience, after the Russian invasion to Ukraine, thanks to his regular speeches in front of various parliaments, Zelensky has changed the vector of politics in Europe and the world the way no one could have expected a few months before. Prior to the invasion, Zelensky had meetings with various world leaders. They've promised to support Ukraine in all possible ways to prevent Russia from war. However, as it turned out later, some promises just failed. For instance, shortly before the Russian invasion, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, visited Putin in Moscow. They have spent six hours talking behind closed doors. A day after, Macron met Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv and promised to invest more than a billion into the Ukrainian economy. France is the member of Normandy format and Macron talked about the Donbass conflict resolution with both Zelensky and with Putin. But recently he announced that French soldiers are not going to fight against Russia on Ukrainian territory. He still calls Putin from time to time, but the number you have dialed could not be reached at the moment. Western media claim those trips of Macron to be a part of the election campaign of upcoming April president elections in France. During the 2017 elections, Macron opposed Marine Le Pen, the leader of National Front, the far-right political party. She was said to have close ties with Putin as she recognized Russia's annexation of Crimea. Le Pen even promised to lift the sanctions from Russia if she wins the presidential elections. This year, again, Le Pen is Macron's main rival for the upcoming elections. One more member of Normandy is Germany. Unlike France, Germany had already held the elections. New Chancellor Olaf Scholz also met both Putin and Zelensky before the Russian invasion. Like Macron, he discussed the Donbass conflict resolution with both. Scholz is known for his criticism of NATO, and while some NATO countries were already sending weapons to Ukraine, Germany supplied Ukraine with only 5,000 military helmets. And and as he explained, due to restriction of weapons export, Germany also blocked other NATO countries from supplying the weapons produced in Germany. However, after the open war started, the attitude of Scholz's government has changed. Germany suspended the certification of the Nord Stream 2 and is ready to decrease its dependency on Russian hydrocarbon products. Bundestag also decided to provide 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 air defense systems to Ukraine. However, Ukraine still cannot get an answer from Germany about further supplies. So far, they provide help to Ukraine with caution. It is difficult to produce predict what will be the next steps of Chancellor Scholz and his government. And it's also hard to say whether Germany will finally ban Russian energy resources. Hungary is also on the eve of the parliamentary elections in April. Today, Fidesz, the political party of current Prime Minister Viktor Orban, holds two-thirds of the parliament. During the first day of Russian invasion, Orban said that Budapest, together with NATO allies, condemns the Kremlin's aggression, and Minister of Foreign Affairs Peter Siyarto confirmed that Hungary supports the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Hungary, being a member of the EU and NATO, tries to block the sanctions against Russia implemented by the European Union. Due to long-term agreement with Russian Gazprom and according to Eurostat, Hungary has the lowest gas prices in Europe for households. So Budapest resists and Viktor Orban claims that his government will not support sanctions against Russia's oil and gas because this would threaten his country's safety. Orban's government also is not going to support Ukraine with weapons. Moreover, Budapest is blocking the supply of weapons from NATO countries on their way through Hungary to Ukraine. After the bombing took place in Lviv region, nearby the NATO borders, Petr Siyarto declared that the explosion so close to NATO territory indicate the danger of armed aid to Ukraine. Viktor Orban has been in office since 2010. More than ever, he has been reminded about the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, repressed by Soviet Union. So before the elections, six opposition parties united into one front to oppose Fidesz. But it's still hard to predict whether the attitude of the Hungarian government will change in April. It depends on Hungarians themselves.